Hey, hey, what is up, guys? It is Orbean Hardware, and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Today, I'm going to show you guys the best full HD and 1440p gaming and streaming PC you can pick up right now for around $1,000. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys step by step how to put together this entire $1,100 gaming PC in 2021, showing you guys all the parts I'm using before booting the system up and testing out the gaming performance in both 1080 and 1440p resolution in 18 of the current most popular games. We're also gonna look at the ray tracing performance and what performance you can expect and how AMD's new Radeon GPUs stand against uh, Nvidia's similarly priced GPUs. Now all PC components you see in the video are linked up in the video description down below. Alright so let's go ahead and start with the build then. And I like to start all my PC builds with the motherboard coming in at $110. We find the most popular or one of the most popular B450 budget ATX boards for Ryzen. This is the Tomahawk Max from MSI. Now before installing the CPU, we need to get rid of these two retention clips. So let's go ahead and do that. So with that done, let's go ahead and unbox the CPU. This is the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a 6 core, 12 thread CPU with a 3.6 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4.3 GHz. Now included in the box is also the cooler, which we're gonna use for today's build. Uh, in terms of CPU performance, we see that this $199 processor is performing fantastic even versus much more expensive CPU picks. And that makes the 3600 one of the, if not the best CPU picks for any gaming PC in 2021. Now keep in mind guys, be careful not to touch the pin sticking out of the bottom of the CPU only handle the Ryzen CPU from this side. Now to install the CPU we need to match up the triangle located at the lower left side of the CPU with the triangle or circle on the motherboard. Lift up the lever, line up the triangles or triangle with the circle and then gently place the CPU in the socket just like that. Then lower the lever and the CPU is installed. Alright, so next up, let's go ahead and get the CPU cooler ready for installation. And the installment process is easy. And all you basically need to do is to position the CPU heatsink over the CPU so that the AMD logo is facing the same direction as the Tomahawk heatsink. Make sure that the four spring screws align with the screw holes on the back plate. Then carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern like so until you feel resistance. Then take the CPU fan cable and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And with that done guys, we can go ahead and move to our next component, which is going to be our RAM or memory. Now I highly recommend going with a 16GB dual kit. A speed of 3000 to 3200 is generally a great sweet spot for most gamers and pretty much any kit will work. But yeah, I link up my top favorite picks down below. Now this kit from G-Skill called Trade and C RGB is a great pick, but there are cheaper options out there as well. Simply pull back the tab for the second and the fourth dim slot and plug them in. And that's it. Now we're almost ready to install a motherboard in our Fantex case. Just one more step before we do that. Let's go ahead and install our storage. And this is the A2000 from Kingston with 500GB of space. 
the A2000 is a great M.2 SSD that I've been using for most of my PC builds with awesome and great success. Now Kingston is also selling a 1TB model if you need even more space. Anyway, I'm going to link up my top favorite budget M.2 picks down below. Remove the M.2 screw, then slide in the A2000 in with a 45 degree angle, just like so. Then we can go ahead and secure it down. With that done, we can now prepare our case. This is the P400A from Fantex. It is a $90 mid-tower case with 3 ARGB fans that you can address via the ARGB button that we find at the front of the case. Building a PC with this case has been a dream of mine for quite some time and I'm very excited to see how just how awesome this PC will end up looking once all our components have been installed. Taking off the side panel is quite easy, we need to remove these four thumb screws and then yeah we can remove the tempered glass side window. Before installing the motherboard. Don't forget to install the so-called motherboard IO shield. Now this one is going in from the inside of the case. With these audio ports you see here, they should be pointing towards the bottom. Now we can go ahead and secure the motherboard using the screws that comes provided by Fantex. Now is quite a good time to install the chassis cables that takes care of the audio and front USB so that we don't have to worry about that stuff later. But let's go ahead and start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. The connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio, and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, we have the front panel connectors, and yeah, you find these right next to the USB 3 connector. So let's grab the power supply and make sure that the fan is facing downwards, and gently slide it into place and secure it. Now we're gonna do a few cables before it's time to install our graphics card. And first up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to the right side of the board. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner of the case. Lastly, we also need SATA power to feed power to the ARGB controller. So yeah, let's give that one some power as well. And now guys, it is finally time. The part you've been waiting to hear about, the graphics card. Now this here is the XFX Radeon RX 6700 XT Swift 301. Now the Navi 22 GPU, also known as the 6700 XT, comes with 12 gigs of fast G6 memory on a 192 bit wide bus and super fast infinity cache. And with plenty of power under the hood, the RX 6700 XT is the perfect 1080 and 1440p graphics card. Now stand against Nvidia, the 6700 XT performs similar to the RTX 3060 Ti and the 3070. However, when comparing the ray tracing performance, it is clear that the Nvidia is a bit faster here. Now that doesn't mean that the 6700 XT is a bad graphics card, I mean just take a look at the 18 game benchmark, we clearly see that AMD has done a fantastic job with this graphics card, there is no doubt about it. And as you can see guys, regardless if you choose to pair this gaming PC with a 1080 or a 1440p gaming monitor, you won't get disappointed. The only <laughs> disappointment right now is availability. The situation is however looking better and brighter. Anyway, plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics. 
and that is it guys slap on the side panel and yeah let's fire up the pc and let's take a greater look at some of the games tested at a deeper level So let's kick it off by having a look at Call of Duty Warzone, a game that offers great visual details and some ray tracing elements. And having the game turned up to max is no problem for this gaming PC. Starting at 1080p, we can expect as much as 155 to 160 FPS. Whereas in 1440p, you will see around 180 FPS on average. And this is with the game turned up to max basically, with ray tracing enabled. Next up, we have Days Gone, and we're starting things with 1080. And I'm settling for the highest setting that the game offers. This gives us a frame rate of 90 on average and about 71 at 1% low bumping the resolution to 1440p and you can expect similar numbers as before over 80 fps on average and 1% low at 61. Death Stranding is next up and as you guys can see we're putting everything at max and that gives us almost 160 fps at 1080p. If you have a 1440p monitor however, you'll probably be more interested in what frame rate you can expect at 1440p and here you can expect as much as 137 FPS with this PC. Let's move on to Red Dead Redemption 2, which we know is quite demanding. Now I'm putting everything at high to ultra and let's start having a look at 1080p where you can expect 84 FPS and 69 at 1% low. Bumping the resolution to 1440p results in 64 FPS, so yeah, very impressive numbers overall. Let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla and once again yet another demanding game. I'm putting the settings to ultra and this gives us almost 110 FPS at 1080p and 75 FPS at 1440p. Next up we have GTA 5 starting at 1080p ultra settings with pretty much everything maxed out except for some shadow details and extended viewing distance. Now, if you're planning on playing the game at 1080p, 90fps is what you can expect. And if you have a 1440p monitor, you can expect an average frame rate of over 60fps. Last up guys, we have Control, and if you want to play the game with respectable frame rate with ray tracing, I recommend that you settle for 1080p, where you can expect 64 FPS on average. At 1440p, I strongly recommend that you turn off ray tracing. It is however still fine having everything set at ultra, and you will see over 60 FPS. Again guys, all PC components can be found down below. We also have an official Discord server up and running and if you guys want to become a part of the community, asking questions either to me or any of the awesome people on the channel, please go ahead and join the Discord server today. Link to the Discord can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.